good morning, everyone. We welcome those who are uh, worshiping on, online with us today. We thank you for being a part of this uh, worship experience with us. We're glad that each and every one of you are, are able to be here. I hope you have had a good week in the Lord uh, and that this service will be uplifting to your heart. Uh, it's one of the things that I have found out, even in some of my hardest moments, when I've opened my heart in praise to God, I have found, I have found solace and I found peace and even uplifting. Uh, when we turn to God, it's always the difference that we find that we need for our lives. So I'm glad you're here today. Hope you feel good, but if you don't, I hope this service will enable you to feel so uh, as you draw close to the Lord. There are several announcements that I need to make before we enter into the service today. A reminder that we are in a Bible study right now. We are doing a study of the seven churches of uh, Asia. Uh, we will be looking at the uh, church at uh, Smyrna uh, this coming Wednesday. Uh, by the way, all of these lessons are uh, on our Facebook, uh, by way of our Facebook on YouTube, and you can, you can follow along if you would like to do so. But for those of you who can come, we, we changed our time last week uh, in order to be able to attend a, a funeral service for visitation and, and for the service itself. But we will be meeting again at the uh, regular scheduled time, 10 a.m. this coming Wednesday, for those of you who are able to come and will choose to do so. Uh, we will be observing communion today. Uh, I want to remind the uh, elders that will be assisting me, uh, Gene Bonin, uh, David Peters, uh, Debbie Sessaman, and Ollie McClung. Uh, when that time comes, I will be calling for you to come forward to assist me uh, in, in the communion. For those of you, again, who are online, uh, you can go ahead and, and get the uh, elements that you will need ready uh, for uh, to be able to take communion with us uh, toward the end of our, our worship service today. Uh, a reminder to the ladies, a CPWM will be meeting next Sunday following the morning worship service. Uh, there will be a lunch. All ladies are uh, invited to come and participate. Uh, we are planning a vacation Bible school as we would this uh, every year. We are planning it for June 20th to the 23rd uh, this, this summer. Uh, for uh, So those of you with uh, children or th and those of you who would like to help, with Vacation Bible Bible School. Please keep those dates in mind. Uh, put them on your calendar, uh, June 20th through the 23rd. For more information, I guess you would call Jackie Tao. Uh, Jackie would be able to uh, fill you in, give you more details on this. I uh, would be glad to do so. She can, I'm sure, use the help uh, if you would like to do that, as well as uh, look forward to the children that are able to come and participate in our Vacation Bible School. Uh, we want to thank everyone who participated at the uh, work day yesterday. Uh, we had several that turned out. We had a breakfast, a real good breakfast to start with, and then the, the work day itself. And had uh, I don't know how many people actually came out. It looked, uh, what, about 10? Uh, 1,100? No. <laughs> Uh, 11. Oh, 11. Okay, okay. I just I, I don't want to misquote you. And I said, okay. 11 people came out and, and participated. And uh, you can you can look around in the uh, yard out back, especially, uh, but also some things on the inside of the church uh, were were taken care of as well. So, uh, much needed, to, and appreciate those who were able to come and 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 uh, take part in it. Uh, if you weren't here this uh, last Sunday, uh, just to let you know, we uh, we welcomed two uh, new members to our church family, uh, Ryan and, uh, and Misty uh, Gillibo. Uh, and they're here, by the way. They're sitting right over here. Uh, other than that, I won't I won't embarrass you. <laughs> but they're right over here <laughs> and uh, sitting in our worship service. And we we're so happy to have them as part of our our church family. And, uh, glad that they uh, that God led them to to this church to to be a part of our family. Well, those are the uh, announcements that I, I needed to share with you uh, at this particular time. Uh, anything else you might find on the very back of your bulletin could be a, a, a maybe some information there for you. Uh, I call again. I call your attention to the inserts in your bulletin, especially the little slip of paper, uh, because on one side of it it gives you an opportunity to. Uh, share any prayer concerns you may have. 
uh, we uh, encourage you to do that. If you uh, have a, a, a need personally, or uh, be it yourself or somebody in your family or friend that you would like for us to participate in prayer with you for them, please uh, write that information down. Uh, the other side is just information you might give us with regard to yourself. Or if you need information uh, from us as far as the Rocky Ridge Church, uh, any questions or you might have, please feel free to write that information down. And you can place this in the uh, collection plate when it's passed later on in our service. And we will take care of that matter in, in due time. But th again, thank you for being here today, for, for coming to worship with us at, at Rocky Ridge. Uh, we pray that you will feel uh, right at home here with us uh, all together today with each and every one. You'll feel the Spirit of God moving upon you, uh, and your spirit will be uplifted and drawn to him with thanksgiving and with praise. Let us open our service in prayer. Father, we do come before you with grateful hearts, uh, with thanksgiving, as well as with praise. Thank you again for allowing us the opportunity to do so. Uh, we're not to take for granted, Father, the, uh, the opportunities we are given uh, they, because these opportunities, uh, are, are, are uh, while they seem simple in, in one respect, uh, we, we know of brothers and sisters that are unable to, to do what we're able to do today and uh, they are hindered because of things uh, in their lives, physical or otherwise, and it keeps them from being here, though their hearts are very much here with us. Uh, we pray your blessing upon those who are not able to attend, who, who would, would like to. And those who are able to join us online, we, we welcome them. And, and we pray, Father, that you will bless them because we want their hearts to be, uh, to be filled as well as our own. Uh, our hearts are already filled with praise, as we have said. And, and we pray that uh, as we come before you in worship, that we'll be doing so in a way that will be uh, honoring your, your name. It'll be right. It won't be something that we do again with uh, with any kind of uh, uh, anything that we hold in our hearts that would would not allow us to, to love you fully and purely. So please help us to get our, our hearts at one with you as we enter into this time of worship. May, again, our praise and our thanksgiving serve to give you the glory that is rightfully yours. All of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord is our light and our salvation. Why should we be afraid? The Lord is the stronghold of our life. What have we to fear? Let us shout with joy to God. Let us sing and make music before our God. Amen. So if you will stand and we will do just that. Yeah. 
of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good.
us affirm our, our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. In your bulletin, you will find a, an updated list of prayer concerns that we have we uh, insert in your bulletin every Sunday. A few changes. Some uh, of the concerns we have listed for a while. One of the concerns that we've had listed for some time, and I'm glad to be able to share with you as we pray together today, is that uh, Susan Ellis's uh, nephew, Luke, four years old, has... Uh, received a, a new liver and is doing well uh, so we rejoice uh, in that light and we still want to remember him it's still a long long recovery uh, remember him and his family in your prayers today uh, Luna appears to be doing much better uh, and uh, in fact she feels like her playing has improved she's going to probably hurt the other fingers to see if that helps as well no okay <laughs> no no Misunderstood, and uh, but but we're glad she's doing a lot better. Uh, my my niece Kim, uh, up in Tennessee, who had had surgery this past week, wanted me to uh, tell you how much she appreciates the prayers that have been lifted up on her behalf during uh, the past uh, two or three procedures she has had. Hopefully, this is the uh, the last that she will have, and she's doing doing so well. We're we're thankful for that. But uh, do remember her in your prayers, and we want to continue to remember the family of Greg Davis in our, our prayers this morning as well. Uh, certainly they, they are in much need of that. Uh, continue to pray for the uh, ongoing search for, for Pastor and also for the position that's being filled. Uh, well, it will be filled following the end of June uh, in the denomination with Global Missions, so we want to be in prayer about those. Uh, also be in prayer uh, uh, for your session, uh, uh, for the other ongoing things that we have at, at hand that we need to deal with. Always uh, need your support, your encouragement, so that we can be a, a, a greater support and encouragement for you as well. So please keep us in prayer. We want to continue to remember Paul Strong in our, our prayers uh, and his family uh, as the, the need there continues uh, to be great. Uh, please hold them each and every one up in, in prayer today. Uh, and also uh, remember with me uh, in your thoughts and your prayers the CPWM. Uh, they will be meeting this next Sunday. Pray for them and for uh, the leadership of the Holy Spirit as they uh, follow uh, God's heart for, for this group uh, as they are part of the ministry of our, of our church family. So be in prayer for them too. Uh, and I, I know there are probably other concerns that you have in your heart that we uh, that have not been shared aloud that need to be remembered. We'll we'll do it this way. We'll remember one another. As I encourage you every Sunday at this time to to just look around you, uh, uh, take notice of the people that are sitting in, at least uh, somewhere close to you, and and hold them up in prayer, uh, because all of us need to be held up to the Lord in this regard. Join me as we pray. Father, as we come yet before you again uh, with grateful hearts, we approach you and also with a sense of awe and reverence. Uh, we don't take this uh, invitation or, or, uh, lightly. We don't feel the opportunity to be before you as something uh, that is to be taken for granted. Uh, we, we understand that you uh, have ears that are open to hear the prayers of your people uh, and you desire a people who will pray on their heart. We'll pray fervently and, and pray consistently and, and pray reverently before you, always seeking your will in light of what they are praying for. 
uh, noting that it's not our desire to come before you thinking that we should uh, change heaven's will on earth, but to certainly seek heaven's will on, on, uh, you know, for us here on earth, not earth's will somehow uh, mixed in with that. We understand that your ways are higher than our ways. Your thoughts are greater than ours. Uh, there are things you know that we don't know, and while we think we've got it all figured out, we find so often that we, we know so little. So help us to be wiser in our, our time of praying. Uh, help us to, to understand that we are waiting for, for when we need to wait. We should wait for you for further light. Uh, always trusting you, knowing that as we seek your will in our prayers, we are going to receive that which is going to be for your glory and for the, and for the good uh, of what we are praying for and those that we are praying for as well. Thank you for letting us share our hearts in this manner, for you sharing your heart with us as well, because we, we need to hear from heaven, even as heaven is open to hear from us. To you be all the praise. Continue, Father, we pray. Please continue to, to bless us in such a way that that blessing overflows. And uh, not something that uh, simply finds its rest in us, but becomes, if you will, a well springing up and becomes a blessing for, for others around us. May our lives be a difference in the world in which we live because of the difference that you are making in us and through us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. At this time, we will worship the Lord our God with our gifts.
Dear Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day and for bringing us together in your house to worship you. Please open up our hearts to hear the message you have prepared for us. We ask that you accept our tithes and offerings to advance your kingdom to the ends of the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you have your Bible this morning, you can turn to the New Testament, please, uh, to the book of Mark. I'm going to be reading from the uh, 10th chapter of Mark, beginning with verse 17. Mark chapter 10, beginning with verse 17. And the message in which I want to share with you today is entitled, You Were Made for More. You Were Made for More. And I want you to think about that as we read the scriptures today. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go and sell everything that you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. At this the man's face fell and he went away sad because He had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for the rich to enter into the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. And I'll end by reading at this point. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your precious word, for these words in particular that lay before us today. We always look to you as we look to your word for greater understanding. And I pray that you help me to to discern your heart fully in light of that which you have put in my heart to share with your people today. May my words reflect your heart in every way for your glory and for the good of those who receive this message. And I always pray, Father, even beyond what I am able to do, even with your help, I pray that through the Holy Spirit and all things that need to be heard, whether they come from the lips of your servant here in the pulpit or not, will still be heard as you whisper those truths to each one of us. And in return, we give you the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, I'm sure y'all are probably, well, I say I'm sure. I think you're probably aware of the uh, story that's been told. And there's more than one version of this story about the, the eagle in, in the chicken coop or the chicken yard. Uh, but the particular version of the story that I, I'm going to mention to you, I'm going to even go so far as to abbreviate it a little bit. A farmer happened to find an eagle's nest, and in that nest was a, a single egg, and there was no sign of uh, any uh, eagles anywhere about. He even waited a while, 
out to see if any would return to the nest, but for whatever reason, they didn't. So he took the egg home with him. He put it in the incubator and eventually attached a little eaglet. Uh, he put the eaglet among his uh, his little chicks and chickens uh, in uh, the chicken in the, in the chicken coop and out in the yard. It ran around with them. It grew up with them, uh, and it began to imitate them. Obviously, uh, walked around, did its best to cluck like a chicken, though it did sound a bit strange. Uh, not what it did. Did its best to pick up corn off the uh, ground, though it was pretty hard because its beak was a lot was a bit different from the beak of the uh, of the chick other chickens that it was uh, running around with. But it learned to think like a chicken. It, it learned to act like a chicken. And yet, somehow, it felt like there was something not right in all of this. Especially one day when it happened to look up at the sky and it saw an eagle soaring over it. It thought to itself, now that is what I would like to do. I'd like to be able to soar through the sky. But I'm just a chicken. Now, there's, I said more than one version of this. One of the versions says that, uh, says that he never did figure out that he wasn't a chicken and went on and lived his entire life walking on the ground with the other, with the chickens that he was amongst and never realized anything other than he thought he was a chicken. Another version says that ultimately, uh, with uh, different, with help, he learned that he was not a chicken, but he was made for something more. And he aspired for that, and one day he just took off into the sky, and he began to soar, and he began to embrace the life that he was meant to embrace, and to live like an eagle is supposed to, is supposed to live. I think, there, uh, I think in, in one sense we can learn from this story that and although a lot of people are, are somewhat like this confused eagle, they know they were made for something more, but they live their lives with a sense uh, of, of, of something much less than that. And, and, and they look around them and they see others living their lives in this way, and they just imitate that, and, and they embrace that as their life, and yet there's this longing in their hearts. There's a sense that I had this feeling I was made for something more than all of this. I believe when we, as we read this story, even though uh, often when it is read, it's about uh, salvation, about a guy looking for a way to heaven, I think this man was also looking for life. And while he had learned a lot of things that seemed to uh, spell out success as far as life is concerned in this world, he realized there was still something missing in his life, and he longed for that. And that's why he went to Jesus, to try to understand what it is that he might be missing. All of us, I think, are born in this world with a void, if you will, with, with a place within our heart, for lack of a better way of putting it, and all that is not going, is that is empty, and will remain empty until or unless it is filled. And we might try to fill it with the things of this world, but it will never suffice. It will, never, it will never give us that, that satisfaction or it will never spell out, it'll never spell out the, the true meaning of what our longings are. It'll never be that for us. There's only one who can, can, can do that for us. Because that, that, void, that void is for God and for God alone. And anything and everything else and all, is going to leave us still longing because we'll still be lacking in our lives. I want to give you three things to think about today, and I'll try to run through these for in just a few minutes. I want to say, first of all, your life is not to be all about junk. Now, I don't say that to be ugly or whatever, but your life is not all about stuff. It's not all about junk, if you will. Now, junk usually doesn't start out like junk, looking like junk. In fact, a lot of junk really, in the beginning, looked like treasure. And that's why we wanted it, or why we felt like we, we needed it, and, and we went after it. Now, this is too good to, to, to be made up. This is really true. And, and uh, when the boys were real little, and, and, I, and I've told this story in other places. I'm not sure I've told it here or not. But I, I, I promise you, this is not made up. This is a fact. 
I went down to the boys' room they had downstairs, which was their toy room at that particular time. And uh, Patrick, uh, my oldest son, happened to be there. And uh, I went down there to get him to clean up the, the toy room, to straighten it out. And there he was standing, I kid you not, in a, in a, surrounded by all these toys. All these toys were all over the place surrounding him. He was in the middle of this. And he looked up at me when I started talking to me, and he stopped me. He said, Dad, I've got to have something. And I said, son, what is it that you have to have? And he said, Dad, he says, there's this thing he saw on TV. I can't even remember now what it was. What, it was a toy, another toy. And he says, I've got to have it. I, in fact, it wasn't just that he had to have it. As far as a need, it was a want, or a want. It, it was something that was necessary. He just, he just couldn't really be happy without this. But he said this. This is what really got me. He said, Dad, I promise you, if you get me this, I will never ask for anything else. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever felt like that? If I could just have something, that something would be so, so fulfilling. It would be so, uh, it would be so uh, completing well of what I feel I, I, I need for my life that I don't I just wouldn't want for anything else the world will leave you thinking that but it won't leave you feeling that way very long you know, because you will see something else somewhere down the line that will make you feel the very same way and one of the things I have found out among many things is the problem with stuff is it, it takes up space you know, you know when you get, you get stuff in your life you know, it, it takes up space. We live in a neighborhood at, at Alabaster, I kid you not, where a lot of our neighbors, their garages are so full of stuff, they can't even park their cars in their garages. Isn't that something? You buy a house with a garage and you can't even get into the garage. Now, because of all the stuff that overflows from their li living part of their house into, into the garage. I don't know if any of y'all ever watched the the reality show on TV, Hoarders. <laughs> I don't know if you ever watched that particular show. I only watched it once or twice. But I mean, it would show homes, it would show houses with people living in this. And, and, I, and I'm not, I don't know what your houses look like, so I don't know what, you, what it looks like in your house. But it was so full of stuff that you could hardly walk around in the house. So full of stuff. And this stuff that we find out owns the people who live there. They, they, they can't get rid of it. They just, they just can't let it go. And in fact, if there's any way possible, they keep adding more stuff to the stuff that they have. But one of the things that really saddened me about this show was that in several of the situations, it became a problem because even their families could not come and visit them and be with them. There was no place for them. There was no room for them. What should have been most important to them, what should have been most precious to them, they had no room for it. You know, there was no, because of all the stuff, they, they, couldn't, they couldn't have a place for the people that they should have, should have treasured the most. Here's a man whose life was so full of stuff, and stuff is not always things. It's not always things. He had some other, he had other types of stuff. He had, uh, this, this man had riches. This man had a reputation uh, that he had, had earned. He, 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 he had a, a lot of, I'm sure he had a lot of awards and whatever, uh, was really noted in society. And this man had religion. He had, a, he had a lot of stuff in his life, but he had no room for a relationship with Jesus Christ. For when that was offered to him, and all, he walked away with his head hanging low because his stuff had become so much his life and his life so much about stuff that there was no room for Jesus. When I was doing a, a revival years ago in Hubbard, Texas, and I, I went over to a man's house, I, I'm sure Becky will remember this, and uh, we went over there one night after the service to visit with them for a while. This man was uh, uh, quite successful. He started out, though, living in a trailer. He and his wife lived in a trailer. When he got to be well off, he built a very big house. He built it around the trailer. The trailer was in the middle of the house. 
I kid you not. And, and the house that he built was built all around it. And he, he talked about his success. He had children, but, but the children were not a part of his life. That's a story in itself. He had a lot of land. In fact, he was out, I was out in the front yard with him, and he pointed out there, and he said, you see way out there as far as you can see? And I looked, and I said, yeah. He said, what do you see? I said, well, all I see is cactus and, 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 and small little trees and whatever that they had in that part of the country. And he said, he said, well, there's a cabin out there, but you have to drive a pretty good ways. I own that much land so far that you can't even see the cabin. You have to drive out a pretty good ways before you get to it. And he felt so proud of himself. But for whatever the reason, he had no room for his children in his life. And he, but he, he had all this stuff, and I'm thinking to myself, what are you, you know, how can you feel, how can you feel like your life is complete or, or, or meaningful when the things that should be cherished the most can have no place in your life? They have been crowded out. When we crowd out Jesus, you know, we make life a lot less than what it is meant to be. And Jesus brought this up one time when he said in Luke chapter 9 and verse 25, he said, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit his own soul? What does it matter how much stuff we have if we don't have a relationship with God? If we don't have a relationship with the people that are that have been given to us and, and should be treasured by us, our own families and our friends. You see, you were meant for more. You were meant for more. Which brings me to the second point. Your life is to be all about Jesus. Not junk, but about Jesus. Not junk in Jesus, about Jesus. About him. Whatever else is in your life is somewhere else, but it's not it's not up there with Jesus. There, there's no competition here. It's all about Jesus. It's all about him. Jesus looked at him as he walked away sadly, and he loved him. He loved him. He wanted him to, 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 to be able to have not just a place in heaven, but to, but to have, if you will, life on earth. He said, you only lack one thing. You're a lot closer than you think. You're a lot closer than you think. But that one thing might as well have been many things because it was the many things that kept him from taking hold of the one thing in his life that interfered with that relationship. One thing you lack, go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. Follow me. Following the Lord is what our life is supposed to be all about. Following him and now is where we find life and where life becomes much more than we could ever, ever, ever expect it to be otherwise. Jesus gave him an invitation that he could pass up, unfortunately, because he was so, he was so, he was so anchored to and imprisoned by his, his sense of the need for stuff. He did not have room for a Savior, and that was sad. When Jesus gives us an invitation, though, he walked away sad. Jesus, you know, didn't stop him, did he? He loved him, but even though he loved him, he didn't go after him because life is a choice, and God gives us the freedom to accept or to reject what he offers to us. He gives us that freedom to do so. But he doesn't change the say, hey, I tell you what, I'll change the rules for you. I'll change, all, I'll change what is necessary for you to make it convenient. God doesn't compromise. Because if he, if he did compromise with us, he couldn't be for us what he must be, and he couldn't do for us what he must do. We could not become what we were meant to be. There's no compromise. The ego couldn't live in the chicken coop and be the eagle. He had to get out of there. And we have to leave one way of life in order to embrace fully another 
way of life. We cannot love both mammon and God. Your life is all about Jesus. Not junk in Jesus. It's all about Jesus. All about him. And if there's anything in my life or in your life that keeps it from being all about him, then that's too much. That needs to be gotten out of our lives, whatever it might be. For some, it may be more than it is for others. But he has to be first and he has to be foremost. It has to be all about him. One last thing, and I'll close with this. I want to say that your life is a journey. And it's filled with trials and with treasures along the way. It's a journey. Make the most of your journey because every journey has a beginning and every journey has an end. We don't know how many opportunities we have along the way. We need to make the most of them. There was a story you may may remember about the men who were riding their horses through the dark in a desert way, uh, in a desert. They came to a dry riverbed and a voice called out to them in the darkness and told them to get down from their horses and to reach down into the dry riverbed and to take hold of some of the pebbles that were in that riverbed and put them in their pocket. And they obeyed the voice, not understanding, obviously, what it was all about, but they went ahead and they did exactly. They got down, reached in the riverbed, got some pebbles, put it in their pocket. They got back on their horses, and the voice told them, when sunrise comes tomorrow, you're going to be both glad and sad that you did what I told you to do. Well, when sunrise came, they they kept thinking about what the voice said. They, They couldn't wait. They reached in their pockets, and when they pulled out what was in their pockets. They weren't pebbles, they were, they were jewels, they were diamonds and other valuable stones and all what they found. And then they understood what the voice said, you'll be both glad, glad you got some, and sad that you didn't get more. I think a lot of people are going to find that out about the, uh, what God is offering. And you know, even those of us who choose to follow after him, you know, if, if we, we, might, we might not be gay. We could probably have more than we could ever imagine. And yet we, sat, we, we seem to be satisfied sometimes with so much less. We'll be both glad, but we will be sad knowing we could have had even more. God wants you to have the more. Listen to what Paul says in one of his letters. This is what he writes to the Ephesians. It's in chapter 3, and I'll close with this. Uh, This is going to be a paraphrase from today's uh, Living Bible. Now glory be to God, who by his mighty power within us is able to do far more than we would ever dare to ask or even dream of infinitely beyond our highest prayers, our greatest desires, our most, our most hopeful thoughts, more. And, that, and that's so true. And uh, we can't, my friends, we, if, if no, far, no matter how far we go, we, we can't out, we can't, we can't drain God. We, can't, we can never get everything. To know that there is more we should always hunger for more because we were made for more. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your precious word. This particular portion of your word which has been shared with us today and I pray that you'll help us to continue to dwell in these words and as we approach your table today we are reminded that when you gave you didn't give some you didn't even give simply what we would call a lot. You gave your all. You gave us everything when you gave us your son, Jesus Christ. May we come to the table today giving you ourselves as, full, as, as much as we possibly can. This, and, 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 and may we learn day by day and all that even as we've grown to this point, oh Lord, there's even more. I want it if there is. I want more. I want more. May our hearts always hunger for you. To you be the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like for the elders that I had mentioned earlier in the service to come forward at this time to help with the communion. 
and, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have two of the elders stand here. Now, for any that are up uh, in the balcony area and for Luna and uh, in back here, we're going to have two of the elders go and serve them, the ones that are going to be serving those of you up, upstairs as well. But what I want you to do is come when you're invited to come and get the bread and get the juice. Uh, please return to your seat, and then when we all have been served, we will, we will take uh, the communion together at that time. Now, if there are some who are unable to come, it's understood, and I'll just stay where you are. We will make sure that you are, are served and all as well. Those of you in this section, if you'll come at this time to be served.
bless, O oh Lord, this bread and those to eat. Bless the Lord the fruit of this cup and those who drink it. If you would please stand and we will close our service with a hymn. Father, as we leave here today, our hearts are content to have had this opportunity to be here together and with you as we go out into this world. Help us to realize your presence with us, and I'll, may that bring encouragement to us as we need it. May, it. may it also challenge us to know that as we walk with you, and all we walk to where you would also walk to be able to be a light where there's darkness, uh, to bring hope to all where there are those that are hurting, and all to be a difference in a world that needs the difference that you alone can make. Please make that difference in our lives and through our lives continually. Help us to be a church, Father, who loves you fully in every way, and all to embrace the life that does indeed dictate that we were made for more. To you be all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed.